So I saw two different movies in the last week, and the funny thing is that they were both based off of intellectual properties that were for kids, but they're both very, very different. So this is going to be an interesting week. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark is directed by Andre Overdahl, produced by Guillermo del Toro, and stars Zoe Margaret Colletti and Michael Garza. This movie is based off of the book series by Alvin Schwartz. It tells the story of a group of friends who go to a haunted house in their neighborhood and discover this book. This book is written by a woman who lived in this house a long time ago. It's a legend in the town. And they slowly discover that the stories in this book are actually coming to life and are out to get them. Nowadays, we see a lot of movies based off of older movies or books. And this book in particular, this book series, I didn't read personally. There were a lot of people around me reading it, but I just never got into it. I was not really big on horror until later in my life. So I went into this movie basically blind. I didn't know anything about the characters or the monsters. The one thing I did know going into this movie is that Guillermo del Toro was involved and I love his work. I love the Hellboy series. I love Troll Hunters on Netflix more recently. I just think he does a great job of creating such unique creatures and horror in general. So I was looking forward to that part of this movie. And so walking out, I thought it was just all right. I think there was some potential to do some really cool outside of the box kind of stuff with this. And I think they kind of just took the safe horror route. But I wouldn't say this movie blew me away, but I did find it entertaining. So let's get into it. What worked? Like I said, the movie overall was entertaining. I liked most of the characters. The story was interesting to a point, and there was a cool atmosphere that they were able to develop in this movie. The characters that stood out the most to me were Zoe Coletti's Stella and Michael Garza's Ramon. These two, I think, carried the movie without their characters. I feel like I would not have been as invested. They each have compelling backstories, I thought, and they did give pretty strong performances. I wasn't totally on board with certain parts of their characters, but overall I would say they were the most relatable and I feel like they were the most fleshed out. In terms of the horror, I was actually surprised at how far they were willing to go for a PG-13 movie. I think that the monsters were cool and there were some cool horror scenes. They didn't all work for me, but there were some that stood out really. As someone who didn't read the books, I wasn't sure which monsters were actually part of it and which monsters were invented for the movie, but some of them looked really cool, and they did have a little mix of practical and CGI. Now, some places the CGI didn't work, but I say a lot of the monsters were interesting to me. What didn't work? So, as someone who's, I would say, say relatively new to horror, I have picked up pretty quickly on horror tropes and things that they do a lot in these movies. And this movie has a lot of that. I think it was a little too jump scare heavy for my taste. Not that jump scares are bad, but when you overuse them, then I think they just kind of get annoying after a while. And so there are a lot of moments in this movie where the character looks down a hallway, there's nothing there. They look the other way, nothing's there. They look back that way to the previous hallway, and there's still nothing there. And they look back again. And then they look again, and then boom, there's something there. And you're like, okay, yeah, all right, we get it. Uh, and then there's some scenes, though, that they really did try and do something inventive. But I feel like they did fall into a lot of major like horror tropes. One of them being the... Kids go into a haunted house they're not supposed to go in, and one of them takes something that they're not supposed to, which causes the whole supernatural thing to happen. I feel like I've seen that so many times. This movie also reminded me a lot of other movies that have come out in the last few years. One of them being Goosebumps, which is also based off a kid's book, kid horror book. And the part that really stood out to me was that they both tell the story about people who find a book, and then monsters come out of that book. So I feel like they could have definitely tried to do something a little different for this movie, but it didn't totally take me out, but it did make me think, you know what, I kind of saw this already. And also this movie vaguely reminded me of Final Destination in the sense that each character is almost getting picked off one by one by the monsters or death itself, whatever you want to call it. But this kind of hit some of those beats also, which also was weird. Earlier I had mentioned effects and CGI. Some of the monsters, you could tell these some practical effects like Harold the Scarecrow. I think most of, at least from what I could tell, it seemed like a lot of his thing was practical effects. But then there's other times where they use CGI and that CGI doesn't always work. And that sometimes took me out of it because it feels like the characters aren't actually in danger because they're just running from some 
CGI blob, you know? Some of them didn't actually look as menacing as I think they could have. And again, not that... This is a kid's movie, right? So it's not supposed to be, like, super-duper scary, but at the same time, I wish they did push it a little farther. Speaking of kid's movie... I actually didn't know who this movie was supposed to be marketed towards because I feel like it's definitely too scary for kids who would have been reading the book. Like, the kids that were reading the book when it came out are adults now, so for them, this would be fine. But if you try to take your five-year-old kid to see this, they're going to have nightmares for a very long time. So I don't think it's made for them, but I also don't think it's made for, like, adult adults because it wasn't super scary, at least for me. And so I feel like the demographic they were going for was, like, teenage teenagers but like i'm not sure and i feel like it was kind of weird going watching this movie trying to figure that out the verdict i think at its core this movie could have been really great but it didn't take as many risks as i would have wanted it to overall i guess i was entertained but i don't think this was like the best horror movie of the year at all it's just i guess if you want something to go see i would go see this on discount tuesday or matinee if you're a fan of the books, then you'll probably enjoy this a lot more. But for me, this just didn't do it. So I would say either watch it at a discounted price or wait for it to come on Netflix. Have you seen Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark? What did you think? Let me know down in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. I will see you in the next one.